And our next speaker is Simon Webb, Chief Scientific Officer at Veracam, and he will talk about VM2. Let's welcome him. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you uh, to the organizers uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk about VM2, um, Veracam's uh, free energy method for calculation of protein ligand affinities. Um, so there are a spectrum of methods for calculating protein ligand binding affinities. Um, here on the left we have docking, which is relatively simple. Um, it's very fast, so you can push through tens of thousands or more ligands. Um, and it can give you useful information on, on binding pose. Um, but it's not uh, very good at ranking um, ligands about, uh, according to their uh, affinities. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have the MD-based methods, um, which FEP is an example. Um, these are very rigorous, um, in fact, exact, uh, given a, uh, for a given potential if they're fully converged. Um, but they're, they're, they're very computationally intensive. And so uh, we envisage um, developing a method. Um, I should say that the, the FEP uh, type methods are, 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 are very accurate. So well, we envisaged uh, make, uh, developing a method that sat somewhere in the middle here um, that was faster than FEP, for example, but, ga uh, but gave, still gave reasonable uh, accuracy. And we think we've achieved that. Um, and <coughs> in many cases, we, we actually approach uh, FEP accuracy in terms of ranking, I should emphasize. So uh, VMT, VM2 is a, an endpoint method. So we calculate the, uh, the chemical potential, essentially the free energy of the complex, and then the protein on its own, and then the ligand on its own. And we calculate uh, delta G uh, from those separate chemical potentials. So here's the equation, f the classical equation for a chemical potential. We have uh, the gas, uh, um, gas constant here, temperature, 8 pi squared um, accounts for rotational uh, motion of the system. This is the standard concentration. And we have this integral here, the conf configuration integral, which includes the uh, potential energy, which we will calculate with a force field and a solvation energy. And it, we will be using a continuum model. Um, but this, this uh, integral is over all space, so it's a very difficult integral to calculate. So the central concept of VM2 then is to um, estimate the total configuration integral as a sum over uh, local configuration integrals associated with the low energy minima of the system. Um, so you can see here we will ca calculate um, the configuration, configuration integral for each well, and then we just sum them up and get our total um, uh, um, ch chemical potential. Um, I just want to mention that we can, once we have our chemical potential, we can back out. Uh, if we subtract our uh, potential energy and solvation energy, we can back out uh, a configurational in, uh, entropy term I'm going to refer back to this a little later. So the basic uh, mining minimum algorithm looks like this. We have an initial energy minimum or confirmation. This can be uh, taken from docking. And we have our own uh, methods to generate initial confirmations. And then we initiate a confirmational search. Um, we're, we're really trying to look, find the, low en the lowest energy minimum of the system. During the confirmational search, we probably w usually generate some repeats. We have to identify those and delete. And then we will compute the local configuration integrals for um, each, each of these minima. Um, and we use, uh, to do this, we use a, a method developed in Mike Gilson's lab quite a while ago. It's a harmonic approximation, but we also uh, use numerical integrals to account for some uh, an anharmonicity of the wells. So once we have all these uh, local conf configuration integrals, 
We can sum them and then uh, calculate the chemical potential. This is an iterative procedure, so the first time around, we just will take the lowest energy minimum we've found so far and seed the next conformational search, and then we keep going. And if we, if we find new lo lower energy minima and we go around here, then the chemical potential will be lower, and so we're not converged, and we just keep going around and around till we stop finding uh, lower uh, energy minima, and then we're converged, and we report the chemical potential and output uh, confirmations. So this, this is actually a movie which I can't initiate. The, 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 as, as you might have gathered, that this method does depend on, a, on a, a pretty robust conformational search. The method we use is a, um, a mode distort minimize method. So essentially we uh, calculate a Hessian in torsion space, which we diagonalize, so we end up with these uh, modes which are linear combinations of torsions, and then we uh, distort along those modes, um, and when we hit some kind, like some level of, of maximum rotation that we've set, or, or some high energy level, we minimize down into into the into the nearest energy well. And the idea is that we're pushing this system over barriers and into a new energy well, and we're repeating this, and hopefully, uh, driving the system into lower and lower energy wells. Okay, so so uh, one thing we have to do with the system. Um, I don't think the colors are showing up that well. Um, we, we carve out um, a part of the protein around the, uh, around the binding site to, to keep the, the conformational search, search tr uh, tractable. Um, so we define a real set of atoms, and, and these are the atoms um, that are included in the calculation that are defined at, uh, by a distance cut off to some kind of reference molecule um, in the binding site. And we, um, it is a distance-based criteria, but we do complete residues um, to generate this real set. Then the live set are the atoms that were, are a subset of the real set, and these are the atoms that we'll allow to move. Um, these are, again, these are, this is an atom-based atom cutoff. Um, Okay, so we've uh, applied this uh, our, v our VM2 method to the Schindler uh, benchmark set. Um, I'm going to show results for just straight default settings, out-of-the-box settings of VM2. In this case, um, all explicit waters are omitted from the, from the binding site, so we're using completely continuum solv solvents. Uh, the real and live set um, cutout I just mentioned are six and four angstroms uh, respectively, and we're using uh, amber 14 SB a GAF2, and we're using our own uh, ligand charge method. So here's the results. Um, you can see um, on on average we're doing there's a pretty good signal here, not quite as good as uh, FEP plus, but we do do better than the the docking and prime. You can see some of these uh, uh, points, uh, signals are, are competitive with FEP plus, um, some not quite so much. Uh, and you, you'll note at the end here, TNKS2, we get no uh, signal whatsoever. Um, what we do get, though, is th these are very quick uh, calculations. So we're talking about 20 minutes per ligand on, on 12 CPUs. Um, if you do have uh, GPUs available, um, you can go slightly quicker at seven minutes, but we usually recommend users to use uh, CPUs to get most bang for their compute buck. Um, but because it is so, so fast, we, we usually uh, suggest to users if they have um, a validation uh, s experimental data set, then um, they should try some basic uh, tuning of, of the input uh, parameters of the method. So these are very well defined and simple. Um, here's the baseline that I just uh, showed you. Um, this is using our own um, initial start confirmation method. Um, this is um, a setting where we uh, include any um, crystallographic water in the binding site. There is some um, adjustments we can make to how we set up the, pr the, the active site, how much we relax it, and so on at the beginning. And we can also 
make the cutout um, uh, bigger. And you can see here that VM2 is fairly stable to, the, to all these changes, but there are a few, uh, few meaningful improvements here and there, which just drives up the weighted average you know, fa now fairly close to uh, FEP plus. So we, can, we did the same thing with the GAPSYS benchmark set. Um, um, and you can see a similar, similar result there. Okay, so just a, a brief description of the package. So it's a Python um, workflow that sits on top of a compiled numerical core, CM Fortran, um, which does all the number crunching. That's the, this part goes off to the, the compute cr uh, cluster when you submit the jobs. Um, so it's a command line, currently command line um, driven. Um, so we have a set of five scripts here, which go through the, the first one, um, given uh, the protein PDB and ligand SD file, will go and, and make calls out to Amber tools and our own tools to, to, to do all the setup that's required for the run. The step two, if you need uh, to use our tools for uh, initial ligand confirmation, um, you run that step. The next step is generation of run directories and then submission of the calculations and then once they're finished, uh, results collection. Um, in the output, we uh, have the binding free energies and, and a breakdown of the binding free energy in terms of uh, energy components in CSV format and, um, and also conformers in standard formats. So we have been working um, recently on integration into Mo to, to, to improve usability. Um, this is not quite ready for release yet, um, but pretty close. So this allows you to uh, generate your um, ligand database in Mo, prepare your protein and so on, and then you have this uh, uh, fairly simple um, interface here where you can select various VM2 settings and then it will output those scripts um, I, I just mentioned to run, run the calculation. Um, and then similar on the back, the back end, once the calculation is finished, you can import the, the results directly in, into, into Mo, um, plot, plot your results, again, experiment if you have experiments and so on. So you have available all, the, all, the, all that back end infrastructure that Mo has to offer. Okay, now I'd like to move on and describe um, a little bit about um, our um, introduction of QM into a protein ligand um, VM2. So um, it's quite amenable to in including QM potentials because we can run an initial MM run and then for those uh, confirmations that we generate, then we can do corrections at, at a quantum chemi chemistry level. We, uh, at this point, we're using um, semi-empirical QM, DFTB. And I mentioned earlier we can back out that, that uh, config configurational entropy term from, from our MM run, and we, we actually add that term in. So we've implemented this as an, as an active site cutout option. So, so the same as the MM goes, um, calculate QM of that cutout. And then we've also done a, a, an implementation where we use a fragmentation method, and so we can calculate the, the FMO method actually in games, so we can calculate the whole, include the whole protein in these calculations. So we've applied this to, th to uh, th three systems, so uh, HIV protease and CMET, where we do uh, pretty well um, the correlation. And then this TNKS2 system, where we, we failed to get any signal uh, before. So I'm just going to uh, delve into the <coughs> HIV protease system a little bit. Um, this, this is a system that's quite challenging, so we use it a lot for our testing. It's um, set of 38 ligands, which are pretty large and flexible, and they have three um, um, sites that are, are modified. <coughs> and we start from 2D in, in this system, and so we need to uh, go from our 2D ligand, pop it out into 3D with our, our VCOMP tool, and then we, we have, a, in this system, we have a co-crystal. Um, so we map, we map the equivalent atoms from, from the ligand set onto the, onto the co-crystal, onto the scaffold atoms. And we also apply a force so we can match uh, exactly the, the, um, the scaffold structure. But at the same time, we, we do a sampling, so we actually sample the R groups. So we end up with multiple confirmations 
with the scaffolds on top of each other, and then the R groups um, rotated. And so um, I'll quickly uh, look at the results here. So um, I should mention that we actually uh, do relax the, the live set. Um, these calculations uh, for the full protein take about 50 minutes per conformer on a 32-core node. And, and as I mentioned before, we're taking entropy from MMVM2. Uh, and you can see that we do get an, an improvement in, in, uh, in these metrics. Um, it's probably about as good as you can get, uh, uh, really. And I can sh you can see this uh, uh, plot here. This is the data I just showed. And you can see how the, 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 they tighten up. This data tightens up on the, on the graph. So if we look at the other two systems, uh, CMET, um, again, it does tighten up somewhat, but we have this outlier, and we don't we don't see an improvement in the correlation. Um, it doesn't, doesn't get any worse either. Um, so the biggest change here is in T TNKS2, which we go from zero signal to an, to an OK signal. Now, I know there's been discussion about the change of protonation state on binding for the system, so we could probably push that one a little bit further. So before I, I um, describe this last uh, column, we should note that these, these numbers on, on, the, on the axis are offset. So they're offset according to the average uh, error with, with respect to experiment, uh, which makes sense if you're doing a validation set and then going to apply it to another set uh, later on. And we sit, so in reality, the, the HIV uh, at the MM level is, um, is underbound, and the CMET and TNKS2 are overbound. And for the, but when we get to the QM, these are all over, overbound at, at the semi-empirical level anyway, but by really the very similar amount. So there is definitely a, a, a systematic error between systems, and we can see that if we plot um, with an offset that's, that's calculated for, through, the, through the whole three systems, um, we, we see we get a good, uh, all on a straight line here, so which suggesting that we the QM actually you have a uh, systematic error from s throughout the three systems, whereas opposed to these two MM systems, they're within the w w they're within the system. Okay, this is uh, now we've d we have this uh, QM infrastructure. We're, we've started work on covalent bond QM VM2. Um, so that work is ongoing, so I'm not going to get into any more details on that. So I'm going to summarize. <coughs> um, so we think we have a valuable balance of speed and accuracy, uh, more accurate ranking of congenetic series and docking. If, if experimental data is available, VM2 sp speed allows tuning of settings for accuracy. We have comparable accuracy in some cases to FEP+, but it's much faster. And the fast turnaround achieved uh, is achieved on, on cost-efficient CPUs. We think we have some distinctive use cases. We, we can analyze energy by molecular components. We, put, we, we think we, we can, with a bit more speed up, we can do some, um, maybe uh, do virtual screening following docking, and maybe even interactive ligand design, and in development uh, improvements in the workflow and ligand setup, um, hopefully improvements in our MM energy and solvation model. Um, and then the QM work. Um, and uh, with that, I'd uh, like to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Simon. We have time for one quick question. Thank you. Uh, it was very nice, and I think that uh, one of the things I would claim, maybe you uh, ask for your thoughts about it, is that you are benchmarking a method that is fantastic for post-docking filtering of a large number of compounds and trying to put it at the level of a method that is in detail looking at data sets of 10, 20 compounds. Of course, you are not aiming to perform as well as FEP, although in some cases I saw very impressive results, so you're there. But what I would ask as a user is, okay, then this method for post-filtering must be amazing. So did you have any kind of like results on post-docking filtering where 20 minutes per compound is, uh, is much more? Yeah, so we've had quite a lot of questions like that, and so this is something we're, we're, we're starting to look at. Um, 
So this, this, this large scale, well, relatively large scale benchmarking is, is relatively recent. So this gives us the basis then to, to start looking at that and maybe look at some, f some areas where we can even speed up a little bit, do less confirmational searching and see if we can maintain an acceptable level of accuracy. Um, and then you know, we're looking at being able to screen a, a, lot, a lot more compounds. Yeah, so this is a definitely a direction uh, that, that we're looking at. Okay, let's thank Simon again.